Thank you, Senators. We're going to move to the MPI. I just ask that you quietly leave the chamber if you're not participating in this debate. A proposal from Senator McGrath has been received under Standing Order 75 as follows. Dear President, pursuant to Standing Order 75, I propose the following matter of public importance be submitted to the Senate for discussion. Australia needed a budget to re that reduces inflation and reins in spending to bring costs of living down for all Australians, but instead Labor delivered a high-taxing, high-spending budget that leaves an Australian family worse off by $25,000. Is the proposal supported? Indeed it is. With the concurrence of the Senate, the clerks will set the clock in line with formal arrangements made by the whips. I call Senator McGrath. Yeah, thank you, Acting Deputy President. I, I want to read out the words again of, of this MPI so those listening at home know how important this is. Australia needed a budget that reduces inflation and reins in spending to bring cost of living down for all Australians. But instead, Labor delivered a high-taxing, high-spending budget that leaves an Australian family worse off by $25,000. Well, last night was the great disappointment, wasn't it? A, a budget, a budget that is going to hurt Australians. And it's interesting. Um, uh, Milton Friedman, uh, quite a famous economist, uh, wrote a few books. Um, he said, he's a Nobel Prize winner. Thank you, Senator Scar. He said that inflation is taxation without legislation. So what we've seen with the budget last night is a, a big government budget that is not the solution to our cost of living crisis. It is the cause of our cost of living crisis. So last night, hundreds of thousands of Australians uh, turned on their TV uh, because you know, there's probably nothing on Netflix, and they, uh, they wanted to see Treasurer Jim Chalmers, that disciple of Paul Keating, deliver the cost of living relief that they so desperately needed. But much to their disappointment, all Australia saw was a typical inflationary Labor budget with more taxes and more reckless spending and more inflation to come. So it's not surprising that they flicked back to Netflix or Stan um, or, or Paramount Plus because they knew, they knew how the budget is going to end. Just like they know how the movie is going to end, they know how this budget is going to end. It's going to hurt their purses, their wallets and their bank accounts. Now, compared to the, the Coalition's last budget, this budget had $185 billion of extra spending. So, so for those who are hard of hearing, that's a billion, not, not million, not a thousand, not a hundred, not a cent. That is $185 billion worth of extra spending. That is $7,400 per person. And that $7,400 has got to come from somewhere. And guess where it's going to come from? It's going to come from Taxes. Taxes that are going to be put on you, on your income. Taxes that will be put on you and your business. Taxes that are going to be put on, basically, if it moves, Labor are going to tax it. If it doesn't move, they're going to tax it. And if, quite frankly, it's having a nap, they'll tax it. This is the problem with this Labor government. We know how this movie is going to end. It is going to hurt the Australian people because their record on economic management is so dismal, so poor, that the Australian people are going to be hurt. But with all this extra spending, what has Labor done to support the backbone of our economy? You know, the mining and agriculture region, and the agriculture sectors of our economy, especially so important for Senator Scar and, Senator, and, and myself in terms of our state of Queensland. What do they do? What do they say about, about the $185 billion? Well, guess what? The Treasurer didn't even talk, mention the word rail, didn't even mention the word dam, didn't even mention the word road, didn't, didn't mention the word farmer or agriculture. So he's not going to spend his $185 billion, oh, his $185 billion, I'll correct myself and correct the Hansard, it is $185 billion of Australians' money, it's not the Labor Party's money. They're not going to spend the money on supporting rural, regional and remote Queensland, but more importantly this money actually isn't going to help. Australian families. It's not going to support Australian families. So Treasurer, Treasurer Chalmers in his 30-minute eulogy last night for the Australian economy just was a constant disappointment. And what is interesting, 
that for every dollar of revenue that is imposed in this budget, the government has decided to spend two. So in this budget, it is spending twice as fast as it is raising revenue. Now, try, try, and raise, try and run your family home on that. Try and run a business like that. But of course, Labor haven't run businesses. And quite frankly, they're not very good at looking their own, after their own money because they're all a bunch of, of union hacks who depend on the income from, from compulsory acquiring union fees off the workers of Australia. So what we're going to see with this budget is that Australian families are going to get smashed. And they might think there's a little bit of a sugar hit, but what we do know is that if you have reckless economic management, which is what we saw last night, that means it's going to impact upon inflation. That means the cost of living is going to go up. And then this budget is, is to be renowned as a budget that hurt Australia in the years and decades to come. Senator Polly. Mr Acting Deputy President, what a lot of nonsense. It's the same speech that Senator McGrath comes in here and gives every time we're in this chamber. And his former government have no credibility at all. For over nine years, not one surplus did you deliver. Not one surplus at all. We've delivered that. What we've done is we have started to clean up the mess that you left behind, the trillion dollar debt that the Liberal and Nationals left this country in. That's the reality. That's what the Australian people understand. That's what they made their decision at the last election on. Who was going to be able to get us out of the mess that we were in? And they said very clearly, no to the no coalition. Now, since I've re-emerged in opposition and they come in and they talk about the cost of living, which we are addressing, the Albanese government's budget eases the cost of living pressure on households. Our budget plan will directly reduce inflation in 2023-24. And we know that Australians are struggling, something that you failed to acknowledge in nine years when you continued to run down Australians' workers' uh, wages, when we saw the debt that you kept piling on and piling on. So with this budget, instead of being a reasonable opposition that has accepted the election results and acknowledged that you failed in energy policy, what do we see from you? Voting against things that are going to really ease the pressure on the cost of living of Australians. We hear the opposition come into this place talking about housing, and we all know mortgage interest rates have gone up, which they were doing under your government. What we have done is we have invested $14.6 billion of cost of living package. These measures are expected to directly reduce inflation by three quarters of a percentage point in 2023-24. Australians, we acknowledge are under the pump, so we're carefully recalibrating and redesigning the budget to take the pressure off Australians. We are doing this in a responsible, adult way. Now, the budget priorities are responsible. They're targeted for the cost of living uh, relief while also investing in the future, securing services Australians rely on and strengthening the nation's finances. Our cost of living plan will directly lower price pressures and the CPI in 2023-24 and will not add to the broader inflationary pressure in the economy. Now, we've delivered a responsible budget while still spending so that the government isn't adding to that inflation to our economy. This includes 87 per cent of revenue upgrades in October and May to the budget compared to those, when they were in government, an average of only 40 per cent. There's a big difference between 40 per cent and 87 per cent. Now, I don't know, they put their heads down, they don't want to hear these things. But Treasury's advice is that fiscal policy is working with monetary policy to tackle inflation in the near term. Australians are paying the price for the coalition's decade of failures. The coalition oversaw a decade of wasted opportunities. They had warped priorities and they left Australians with falling real wages. 
They had broken supply chains, which makes inflation worse. They left a trillion dollars, not a billion, a trillion dollar of debt without an economic dividend to show for it. Not one dividend, not one. And they espouse themselves to be the great economic managers between the two major parties. Well, you have been seen for your failings. You have failed. You can't even, what, you had 22 energy policies and couldn't land on one policy that was going to address the energy needs of this country. So what you do now in the opposition is you want to oppose everything. You won't support anything when it comes that we are doing in trying to restructure the National Reconstruction Fund, the Housing Australia Future Fund, cleaner and cheaper energy, the coalition are just voting to increase inflation. That's what you're doing. We want inflation to be lower. You guys, you want it to be higher because otherwise you would get on board and you would support the very good policies that is going to assist the housing crisis in this country. We are going to do something about energy. We're delivering real benefits to Australians. My home state of Tasmania will get a $500 energy pack. Senator Polly, your time has expired. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Th <laughs> uh, Senator Wish Wilson. Acting Deputy President, millions of Australians will be, who voted for change at the last federal election will be disappointed to learn that one of the biggest losers from this federal budget was the environment and our oceans. We know we're in an extinction crisis. And this government, with great fanfare, has signed up for big global pushes like the Aichi Zero Extinction Target. They've signed up for the UN's pledge to protect 30 per cent of our land and sea by 2030. But where's the funding for our threatened species framework in this budget? We know that to properly protect our environment, to stop the loss of threatened species, to restore our environment. We need at least $2 billion a year in funding based on the US model. And what do we get in this budget? Depending on how you dice it, maybe $50 million a year, a few percent of what is required. I'd like to read uh, the words of Professor Ewan Ritchie one of the many scientists who's been ringing the bell on the need for real government funding to protect our environment. And he was surprised when he said words that can't be found in the Treasurer's budget 2023 speech include climate change, wildlife, threatened species, ecosystems, extinction, biodiversity, nature, and the only mention of environment was actually in relation to the environment of inflation. So much for actions to back up the words from this government in a time of real crisis. Budgets are the most important time for governments, especially new governments, to show the nation what their priorities are. And it's clear as daylight that the environment is not a priority for this government. But it is a priority for the Australian Greens. And we will continue to fight for our environment. And we know uh, the government is going to be bringing forward legislation in the next six to nine months. And this is an issue we will continually raise so that in the next budget, in May 2024, we see the environment properly funded. Thank you, Senator Wilson. Uh, Senator Bragg. Acting Deputy President, uh, it's a pleasure to be speaking about this uh, matter of public importance. And uh, I made a statement in an earlier debate that unfortunately uh, the government, uh, whilst deciding to run an inflationary fiscal position, uh, has not been prepared to be honest about that uh, for reasons 
which are only known to the government, maybe some internal reasons or trying to manage some stakeholders, perhaps some noisy stakeholders. But the, uh, the test that they have set for themselves, I think, is a test that we will remind them of on a regular basis, and that's not to be overly partisan, but it's just to be honest and say, well, uh, if you're saying that inflation is going to halve over the next 12 months, and you've written that into the budget papers, then uh, we hope that you're right. But it's, uh, I'd say it's going to be a challenge to halve inflation when you are running uh, a massively expansionary fiscal policy. And that, that I think, is the government's own issue to, to resolve. Uh, certainly, we will be watching very closely what the Reserve Bank does and what the minutes say when they meet uh, every month. And the reality is that fiscal and monetary policy should be working in unison. And the fact that there was a surprise interest rate rise just only 10 days ago or so, I think is a, is a, is a real warning mm -hmm. that the Reserve Bank um, has been prepared to do what is necessary to try and rein in inflation. Uh, the Reserve Bank Governor has been uh, unfairly pursued by the Labor Party's backbenchers just for doing his job. Mm -hmm. And his job has been made much harder. I mean, Philip Lowe's job has been made so much harder by the Labor Party over these past 10 months. And the job of Philip Lowe as the Reserve Bank Governor was made so much harder on Tuesday night with the announcement of more spending. Um, at sure, I mean, not all the revenue upgrades uh, were spent, but a large proportion was spent. And it is true that in the past that too much of the revenue upgrades have been spent. So a key test for a government is, is can it bank all of it? Now, um, I would argue that that was the most appropriate policy position to take in this inflationary environment. So, th I mean, that is the bottom line on inflation. We will watch closely uh, as to whether the government is able to achieve its goal, which is written into the budget. The more immediate point, though, is that more taxation has been proposed in this budget and in the lead up to the budget, uh, a couple of billion dollars on the super funds, uh, the end in some way of uh, dividend imputation, uh, more, more taxes on the gaspers and a range of other things. Now, um, it, you know, eventually some of these taxes are going to cause major problems and distortions particularly this tax change on imputation. Mm. And the reason for that is that the, the government is proposing a new test in the law which says you can only pay a franc dividend if you have a period where you haven't been raising capital. Now, most normal companies, guess what, have to kind of you know, raise capital. It's called equity and you need money to run a business. So I would have thought that uh, if, if the law says that um, you, if you raise capital and you can't pay a frank dividend, then uh, people will be either less likely to raise the capital or less likely to uh, pay tax in Australia. Now, um, that, I think, is going to be a major change to our capital markets if that particular proposal is adopted. And the reason that this proposal is on the table is because the government is needing to raise taxes, which of course is a breach of a commitment that the government gave before the last election, which was not to raise any new taxes. So uh, we've seen a few new taxes in the last budget in October. We've seen a few more taxes in the lead up to this budget, which were leaked out but put into the budget paper two last night. And uh, I would guess that there will be more taxes over the next a uh, year and a half or two years of this term. And so, in summary, the position we have is the government have said that they are wanting to fight inflation, but they're not quite telling the truth about that because they're running an expansionary budget. They've said that they'll get inflation down uh, to 3 per cent or a bit above 3 per cent. Uh, that is a test we will hold them to very closely, and we will look at any other taxes that they propose to try and fill their holes. Thank you, Senator Bragg. Senator Pratt. Thank you, Acting President. Well. The MPI before us today is a very uh, uh, flimsy fig leaf for the opposition in terms of their own record in government. 
It's all very well for those opposite to start talking about cost of living and inflationary pressures that all started under their government and seek to pin that all home to the Labor Party. The simple fact is that you missed the opportunity to ease cost of living pressures for Australians. You had a direct impact on inflationary uh, pressures inside the Australian economy. But let's not forget your so-called fiscal restraint that you claimed to have to try and demonstrate that you weren't um, having uh, inflationary pressure on the economy and not spending as much as you were. For example, let's not forget the so-called zombie measures that Senator Gallagher has so eloquently uh, outlined so often in this chamber as unfunded measures uh, in our federal budget that when we talk about these issues in this place, those opposite look at us incredulously as if to say, well, of course we weren't going to defund that. Of course we weren't. Well, the simple fact is either you were or you weren't. And the budget papers say you were because they weren't there in your bottom line. If you were intending to keep such measures funded, well, then you can't take credit for the downward uh, pressure on inflation for not funding them. It is simply um, you can't have your cake and eat it too for those opposite. So here we have had an excellent finance minister, an excellent treasurer go through the very hard slog of assessing measures in the budget, leaving no stone unturned to ensure that we can maximise relief for families while putting downward pressure uh, on inflation. The cost of living uh, in Australia is, as we know, hitting many Australians extremely hard. Inflation, of course, remains our defining economic challenge this year, as indeed it was last year. We know uh, we are riding the waves of global consequences around the war in Ukraine, but also the decade of waste uh, from the previous government. Wasted opportunities that have put enormous pressure on supply chains here in Australia and indeed uh, in terms of our global networks. Happily, Australians understand that our government has inherited these challenges, not created them. Australians also understand that they look to the Labor government with purpose to address these difficult challenges and to take responsibility for them, unlike those opposite. I have to say it is indeed um, a struggle for Australians facing rising interest rates and rising costs of living. But the only way to bring this under control is through deliberate budget measures. The RBA has one set of levers and our government has another. We have uh, the opportunity to relieve cost of living uh, pressures through the measures in this budget, and we are glad to do so. This means it's important to prioritise relief where Australians need it most. It means we need to prioritise services uh, and uh, utilities, etc., that Australians really rely on and need. Bulk billing, energy price uh, relief rent assistance, um, the expansion of the eligibility for single parents and carers uh, for oh, sorry. Time has expired, Senator payments. Pratt, and I call Senator Babette. Thank you. 
everyone's a winner in Cheshire Trama's budget. Unless you understand that inflation is a tax and a tax doesn't require legislation. A tax that hurts our most vulnerable. We've got a surplus for now. Now, there are no tough decisions in this budget. Courage is not the Treasurer's strong point. The unions are happy, the globalists are happy, the big corporates, they're elated. Productivity boosting measures are non-existent in this budget. It's all about big government and short-term fixes to large problems. Large problems often created by the very government that chooses to ignore them. If we want our country to head in a better direction, if we want to increase our standard of living and help the disadvantaged, the solution is not more spending or big government. The solution is cutting red tape, green tape, removing barriers for business, promoting entrepreneurial attitudes. The solution is growing the pie so that everyone can eat. Thank you, Senator Burbett. Senator Roberts. Thank you. What are the two words too scary for the Treasurer to mention even once in his budget? Mining and agriculture. Ladies and gentlemen of Australia, booming mining and agriculture have yet again saved Australia's economy. The budget surplus is due to mining and agricultural exports, exports not Treasurer Jim Chalmers. Is he keeping it secret because Labor wants to continue destroying these vital industries? We should be opening more coal mines, not blocking them, building more coal-fired power stations, not just blowing them up, and setting our farmers free to feed and clothe the world. Labor's energy relief plan is an admission that net zero policies cannot lower power prices. Today we have the highest ever amount of wind and solar, yet the Treasurer needs to step in and use taxpayer money to cover up how high they're driving power bills on inflation. How inflationary will 400,000 new migrants be? 400,000 people are arriving this year and every single one needs a roof over their head, a home. Thank you. That's Senator, inflation. Thank you, Senator Roberts. Uh, I call Senator O'Sullivan. Thank you, uh, Mr Acting Deputy President. Uh, I rise to support this matter of public importance uh, brought forward by your good self. Uh, Acting Deputy President, Senator McGrath. Uh, this is a very important motion. It addresses a, uh, an issue that Australians, of course, are facing right now. They're feeling the pain of the rise of cost of living across this country right now. It doesn't matter where you are in this country uh, or in what sector or in, or in any section of the Australian economy, businesses, individuals, families are feeling the rise of cost of living. And what we saw last night from the Treasurer, who was in fine form, glowing from the self-congratulation from his own side, channelling high-taxing Labor Treasurers of years gone by, is, is a budget that doesn't address the needs, addressing the needs and addressing the issues of addressing cost of living. What we saw was the Labor, uh, the, in the budget last night was Labor's true colours. Labor's true colours came through, indeed. This budget did nothing to address cost of living pressures for Australian families. It did nothing to address the cost of living burdens being carried by Australians on a daily basis. It's, it's a cost of living con job, frankly. That's what we saw. The only person with less sleep this week when the treasurer, uh, was, than the treasurer was the governor of the Reserve Bank. That's because he knows that if the government continues to overspend, as it has done in its second year, that the only way that inflation can be brought under control is the levers of the Reserve Bank Governor, and that is to raise interest rates. There is enormous pressure on the Reserve Bank now because they're the ones left to carry the can. But guess what? It's Australians paying, struggling to pay their mortgages that are going to be left to do the heavy lifting. There was nothing in the budget last night that actually address the structural difficulties and the structural challenges that it will drive down the cost of living, that will put a, a decreased uh, measure on inflation. There's nothing in that budget. We saw some temporary measures that might help people to, uh, you know, there's a, some energy relief, but the increase is still going to go up by $500, but there's going to be some relief there, but that's for this year alone. What is the government doing? to put downward pressure on cost of living. Sadly, nothing. We know, we know that this government does not actually have a plan. If they did, we would have seen it last night. I mean, we've been saying this for a long time, hoping that would come to Tuesday night, the first Tuesday of May, 
when the budget's delivered and see that there's actually a plan to address this significant issue that Australians are facing, but sadly we were all left wanting. Now the cost of this spend that we saw, because what we saw was increase, increase, uh, in, you know, increased spending, two to the dollar in, coming in in re revenue is going out in an expenditure. And what we're seeing is that, uh, that the Reserve Bank is the ones that are going to have to uh, deal with this, and the Labor Party have no plan to deal with inflation. Labor cannot spend its way out of this cost of living, uh, cost of living crisis. It was the great British Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher, who said, the problem with socialism is that you eventually run out of other people's money. Well, that's what this government's doing. They're spending your money. You're spending your money, Australian taxpayers, and you cannot outspend your way out of this situation. The budget makes life harder for Australians. The budget confirms that your cost of living goes up. The, the budget confirms that the gas and electricity prices continue to skyrocket, that real wages have not grown, inflation remains stubbornly high, unemployment will rise and Australians can expect to pay higher taxes. Now, a typical Australian family are expected to be $25,000 a year worse off under this Albanese Labor government. Under Anthony Albanese, under the Prime Minister, every dollar is worth less. Every dollar is worth less. That dollar that you've got in your bank account or in your pocket is worth less today because of this government than what it was a year ago. The Treasurer is running around pointing his wafer-thin budget surplus, pointing to it. But let's face the reality. It's because of the, the, the resources sector, particularly in my home state of Western Australia, the, the iron ore sector, who's, who's obviously getting uh, record prices or continuing to get record prices, that is delivering the surplus. And the Treasurer Thank can't you. take I, credit I for that. Senator O'Sullivan, the time for discussion has expired.